Hi, everybody. Good to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. You know, it's been a few weeks. Maybe it seems like a year. Maybe it seems like more to you. But really, a lot of us have been in a very, very different situation than we have ever encountered before. We have never in our lifetimes, and there are old people here like me and young people on this call as well, and I can tell you we're in the same boat. We really have never dealt with anything like what we're in today. And today we're lucky enough to have Shannon Gregg with us. I'm David Radin. And we're lucky enough to have Shannon Gregg with us to be able to take us through some of the things that she's learned over the years and some research she's done and some people she's talked to and looking at some of the situations that are going on right now that we will be able to help you make your work from home easier, will help you make it more successful, and most importantly, more rewarding to yourself and to people around you, frankly, because I know if you're like me, I'm here with my wife, who I love dearly and she loves me, but let me tell you, there are times when being with the same person over and over again for long periods of time could be very, very difficult. In fact, she always has this saying that she says, after three days, fish and relatives both stink. So we're all set in that situation. And whether you feel that's the case with whoever you're in home with right now, locked down here in Pennsylvania, uh, where Shannon and I are both sitting right now, we are on, I, I, would you call it a lockdown, Shannon? Yeah, you would. Okay. Basically, you know, if you're in a non-essential business, you shouldn't be out on the streets. I know it's that way in California. There are people here in California. It's that way in New York. There are people on this call in, in New York um, and in probably a number of other states. Um, we've gotten into this scenario where they're now talking about the syndrome in which you keep looking at the bad news about coronavirus. And you, it's like a train wreck. You've heard the, the old expression that you can't take your eyes off a train wreck. And a lot of us are just stuck with that syndrome right now. And okay, I learned a little bit more about that syndrome in today's New York Times newsletter bits with Brian Chen. You might want to take a look at it, see if you can find that article, because that might help you with that. The rest of this session, we just talked about all the negatives. That's as much as we're going to do. We're going to get positive with you right now. We would like to empower you. So let's talk about the things that you can do and that we can all do. That's good, Shannon. You can move that. In order to be able to take advantage of the fact that you have the opportunity to work from home on a more consistent basis right now. There are a lot of us who are travelers who don't like to be on the road as much. Well, we got a chance. There are some of us who don't like the people who they have to share an office with. Now you have a chance to be away from them. So let's take a look at the bright side. Just the other day, uh, should I tell people this? Yesterday, I was walking down the main street in my little burg of Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I was walking down the main street with my wife. She and I have been sequestered together for several weeks now, and we've been keeping our social distance from everybody around us, but we did go out and take a walk, which is perfectly acceptable. And we were walking down the street, and we saw a bunch of signs and a bunch of buildings with offices and businesses that were closed. I got the notice from my dentist that I can't go in because they're closing. We walked by the, the salon that you see here on the left side of my image that we have here on the slide, and we saw a great empowering flatten the curve type of sign. They're closed. There are a number of other people like that. Even the tax preparers on the street were saying, hey, look, we've, we're in here, but please stay out of there and call us on the phone. They're all contributing in one way or the other. Even if you don't do it in quite an empowering way, as you see in this image on the right, where it was put as a, a, a dreaded warning, stay away from our people because we don't want to catch whatever it is you have. The point is still the same. We're trying to do our best to be part of the community and helping it out. If you look at this little sign in the middle, I love this hand-drawn sign. As I walked down the street, there's this little, some of these were signs. So I know it was from a youth by the name of Eden. That's really all I know about Eden, other than he signed a bunch of these, he put a bunch of these on businesses that were closed along the way. And he brightened our days. 
his hashtag was hashtag Eden or everything will be okay was on a bunch of them. So it was just a really neat thing. Apparently he and probably one of his parents or she is even a, a, a female or a male name. I'm not familiar with it. Could be both. Okay. So either he or she was walking with one of his or her parents and um, thought they'd help out. We love to see those types of things. Now, if you're like me, you've probably been getting a lot of email about how all these different people, all these different organizations, all these different companies are dealing with the pandemic, are dealing with COVID-19. Frankly, I thought it was a little much. There are a lot of people who are sending me information that I didn't need to know. Just because I'm on a subscription for your newsletter doesn't mean I need to know. But guess what? I'd rather have you air on the, in the direction that will keep me and everybody around me safe than to do it in the other direction. We've even heard about concerts going on to do fundraisers and they're all being put online. Madonna closed her concert tour. Uh, who did we just hear? The Rolling Stones closed their summer concert tour already. A number of those things are happening, but yet we're seeing these online. My son's taken advantage of that. He's a musician and he's been doing a nightly Facebook Live concert at seven o'clock every night, six o'clock his time in, in, in Austin. And he's been collecting money for charity and he's collected at this point, okay, it's hundreds of dollars. It's not huge numbers of dollars, but everybody gets to do their bit in order to be a help us out. So Shannon and I talked about it. What are we gonna do in order to, to do this? We've got a startup, we've got our consulting businesses. We help people in business a lot and we've been doing that for years. And we knew that our startup wasn't in a position to go out and spend millions of dollars in order to help the cause. So we said, what is it that we can do? And we put together a couple programs. The first one is this session that you're seeing here. Hopefully we'll be able to empower some of you to get to the next level of engagement and work and, and sustenance in your home office and in your new situation. So hopefully that's a good first step. At the end of this session, I'm gonna share with you a bigger program that we've put together in which we want to help you, shall I say, equip your office. And so we do have some financial incentives for you in order to be able to help you in a way that will make it easier and more productive and more empowering for you to work at home. Now, it's interesting because I went out last week and I bought this. Can you, can, can you see this? Okay, this is a selfie mirror with a microphone and a stand and it's really, really cool. I mean, I saw this going and frankly, I probably shouldn't have gone to the store, but it was before we were on lockdown and I had my gloves on and uh, I made sure I didn't touch anything and I kept my distance, but, uh, but I went into the store. And I went and I bought this because I thought this was a really, really cool thing for me to be able to do some of these types of scenarios. Now, you see, I'm not using it today, so I still have to figure out how to do it. But it's one of the things that we think, not necessarily this, but we think you want to equip yourself in a way that will make it easier for you to do what you want to do. So that being said, why are you listening to me and why are you listening to Shannon? to do this. There are lots of people, as I said, everyone's spewing out information these days. There are more, there are more webinars and emails and all sorts of white papers and the governors and the mayors and all these other people are going on, on, um, on TV. Well, we're hoping that we're going to give you a little bit of a different take on it and a way that, again, will empower you. But a little bit about us, just so that you can get some sense. Now, I've been working with Shannon for a couple of years now, and she is, she hates it when I call her a dynamo. But the reality is, Shannon is one of those people who we uh, rely upon. When, when Salesforce.com needs a good speaker to be able to help them empower their people, their users to use their systems better or to be able to, to understand context about certain things, they call Shannon. Shannon has been working for a number of years with a number of organizations who, have, who she has helped implement technology and implement solutions that help them work better. Now, as for me, I'm the, the schlub that comes with her, but hopefully my experience in working for, from home for 30 or 40 years, it seems like 40 years at this point, yeah, I guess it is, um, will be helpful to you 
we've helped implement a number of technologies from CRM systems to other things. In fact, we're among the team that created Confirmed, not recognizing that this thing was going to happen, but knowing that the types of people who would be in our position and doing what we do, especially um, people who do a lot of meetings, um, would be would benefit from what we invented when we put together Confirmed. But that's for another day. We will be available if you want to talk with us about how we can help you on, on that, from that standpoint a little bit later. But in the meantime, we hope that this time that you spend with us today is productive. As I said later, I've got something that I think you'll find to be a little surprise and a little fun. And in the meantime, I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon because as I said, she's the dynamo, I'm the schlub, and we work together well. So I'm excited to hear from her. Thanks so much, David, and welcome everybody. I want to tell you about a time about five or six years ago when I took a fully remote job. And I was standing with a coworker of mine that I dearly respected. His name is Bill. He's a VP of sales. And Bill said, Shannon, how? How are you going to work from home? And he looked around the office and he spread his arms out wide and he said, you're just so good at this. And I understood what he meant. I love people. I feed off of other people's energy. I really enjoy being around other people. I like listening to their challenges. I like taking their input. And I think that feedback loop works so well whenever you're in person with another person. And I was so confident in my choice to go work from home. And I said, okay, all right. Maybe I should be concerned. Let me think about this. And so I approached it in an academic fashion. Um, those of you that know me know that I am nearly done with my PhD. So everything I do has this sort of academic approach to it, much to the chagrin of my seven-year-old several times. And I put out a survey to everybody that I knew who worked from home. Did you transition to working from home? Did you used to work at a workplace? How do you deal with it? Is there emotional loneliness? How do you deal with those challenges? Do you ever feel left out because you don't get that face time? Are you getting less promotions? What are the things that you're going through? And I spent a lot of time asking other people, what do you think about this? How can I make sure this works really well for me? And it, it gave me a really long ability to say, let me put these things into place. Let me be considerate. Let me listen for the things that people told me. And for many of you on the phone, you have not had that luxury. We are in such a weird time. The past week has likely been fraught with emotions for you. There's a lot of change. There's uncertainty. There are things that you just don't know about. There are times that you're probably saying, how am I going to deal with this? How do I deal with this? And one of the things that we can help you with is understand how to technically make that transition from being a person who works in place to a person who works from home. So I've got loads of tips and tricks I wanna share with you today, some tools. At the end, we're gonna take some questions and David's got some things he wants to share with you too. So I found this cartoon, this was on NPR, and I loved the approach to say, yeah, we're, we're socially distant now, but you can look at it as people who are social distance singing. And I will tell you, I live in Dormont, for those of you that are familiar with Pittsburgh, and in Dormont, we are doing a group neighbor sing on Sunday at 7 p.m. Everyone's gonna sing a song from Les Mis. And that is a really interesting approach. The neighborhood is sort of bound together and said, we've got to make something fun out of this. Some people are doing social disc dancing. I've seen lots of dance parties online this week. I joined one with Debbie Allen, which was like my 14 year old dream come true, you guys. I was like in fame this week. I'm gonna live forever with Debbie Allen. <laughs> so, you know, as you work through those emotions, there's also then this technical challenge. How do I work from home as an employee, as a leader, as a parent? We're gonna address all of those things in the next um, amount of minutes that we have together to try to help you work through this time. At the end of this, we have time for questions. If you want to put any questions on the chat box, please feel free to do that. You just hover down at the bottom on the little black box and you'll see what looks like a thought bubble. You can tap on that and send a chat either to the whole audience or just to me and David. And I am happy to take your calls and questions. So one of the things that I know for sure is that creating and keeping a routine is 
so important. This week was a great week for you to take that routine and just throw it out the window. Sleep in, figure out what you're gonna do, fret, read the news. If you did all those things this week, that is fine. That is okay, we all did it, we all did it. But you're gonna start to discover that along with the challenges, there are also these opportunities. So now you're not spending your commute time getting to work. You've got this extra time that you can do something with. You've now got this idea to look around your house and say, how are things gonna be different around here? Or are those the noises that happen in the middle of the day? Are these the interruptions that I'm gonna see? And so I wanna to talk to you a lot about creating and keeping a routine. We've seen some really great things floating around the internet this week, specifically with parents who have kids at home that say, you know, from 8 to 9 a.m. you wake up and do these things, and from 9 to 10 you do school, and 10 to 11 you do this. And uh, I saw one, David sent it to me, that I absolutely love that basically said, the inmates are taking over the prison, stay in your pajamas all day long, brush your teeth sometime before dinner, and that is fine. <laughs> and so I want to encourage you to give yourself that latitude to find the humor in this and find the people who are going to help you get through it. But create and keep your routine. So I have a picture of somebody taking a shower here because I will tell you, you should still do that. <laughs> Even if it's just for yourself, or like David said, he's got his wife at home. He would like to stay married. So take a shower because that signals to you, this is the start of my work day. And this is why routines are going to be so important for you as you transition into being a work from home employee, leader, or parent that is working from home. So once you do that, that says my day is beginning. Here is when I cross that bridge from being in my bedroom and doing my morning things, drinking my coffee, eating my breakfast, and becoming a worker. So take your shower. Please still take your shower and get dressed. So you see these two people here. They've got these beautiful frocks and the guy's got a jacket on. Well, I'm more in line with a guy. So you see I've got an actual blouse on today, but from the bottom, I really look like a newscaster. I've got sweatpants, I've got flip-flops, <laughs> and I would encourage you to do that. But still get dressed, because one of the things that we're gonna tell you a little bit later is that getting on video calls is going to change your life. It is so hard the first week to open yourself up, put yourself on video, because if you're sitting in a conference room and it can fit 12 people and you're sitting there, you're not really aware of how you look, what you're doing, how many times you touch your face, which we shouldn't be doing anymore, how many times you are doing things with your fingers, whether your knee is bouncing up and down. But when you're on a video call, you can see yourself. So up in the top corner, you can see yourself back at you and it does make so many of us really nervous. It makes us anxious. But find a friend, jump on a video call, do a FaceTime, get used to that and start ignoring what you look like. Forget about the way you look and get yourself on video because once you can be on video, you feel a little bit more like you're in the room with these people. So if you are using Zoom or WebEx or GoToMeeting, we'll talk a little bit about these types of collaboration tools in a minute, you will be able to see everybody else that you're working with. And there's nothing that replaces watching somebody take a deep breath who sort of wants to talk, somebody who's making a face that tells you, they don't really understand what, what is happening here. Somebody who's sort of looking at you to say, like, do you have anything to say? You know, those sorts of things. So please definitely get used to being on video. Get used to putting yourself out there in that way because what you'll get back from everybody else who's on the video will be so helpful to you. Last night, I joined a virtual happy hour, which was really cool. It was so nice to see everybody's faces. And I think had we done this on the phone or without video, it would have been very hard for us to be able to say, hey, I know it's this person's time to talk. Andrew's looking to say something. Holly's looking to say something. And so once you're on video and you allow those interruptions to come, it will really give you so much more as you start to transition from being in a workplace to a virtual workplace. So allow those interruptions to come. People know that you have cats and dogs. They know that you have kids. They know that you're dealing with a really tough time. So if your dog jumps in on your lap and is poking his head up in the video, that's great because it allows for that unscripted interaction that you would get in, a, in an office anyway. 
So if you are standing inside of the office cafeteria and you're pouring a your coffee and you spill it everywhere and people get to tell you about times that embarrassing things have happened to them, the same thing will happen organically when people's dogs and cats jump up inside as well. The next thing I want to tell you, I've got this picture of a door and I love these Spartan slides. David, I, David and I had this conversation about, you know, Spartan slides and a lot of my research for my PhD is on adult learners and how adults learn. And I think we're, we do so well with pictures and that's why I put these pictures up here for you. This door is very symbolic because I know a lot of people when I interviewed them said, you have to say, here is a physical representation of me transitioning into my workday. So if you don't have a separate office space, that is fine. If you're using a corner of your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or perching up on top of your bathtub, that's okay. But find that physical thing that says to you, it is now time for work. I know some people will leave their front doors. They will walk outside, turn around on their porch, pivot, come right back in and say, my work day has begun. That will be helpful for you. You know, when you talk to people who have work from home remote, remote jobs, they'll tell you about all the perks. You know, I get to throw laundry in while I'm on a boring conference call, or <laughs> I get to plan out what I'm going to order from the grocery store later. And those are perks. But you have to think about how you're going to set yourself up to say, where do my personal and professional life separate? Because it's very easy to fall into the trap of never being done with work. So I've got a friend, Annalisa, who told me that, you know, when she works from home, she's a work from home person now, at night, it's so easy for her to open up her computer and type out an email and respond to somebody really quickly, which then turns into, we all know what it turns into. You respond to several emails and all of a sudden you're working for such a long amount of time. And so if you keep a routine and you tell yourself, this is where we work and where we don't work, that will be really helpful for you. I'm going to take a pause, David, because it looks like you've got something to add. So, Shannon, it's interesting that you say that because I think those lines are very, very easy to cross and hard to keep. And one of the things that I learned years ago, I, I, when I first started working uh, back when I was living in Connecticut, and we had a, a house that was very easy to do this with, what I would do is in the morning, I would actually start my work day by commuting to work. And that is, I would walk out one door, I would go around, and I would walk into another door. And then in the evening, I would reverse that. Um, my kids who were really small at the time today finally said to me, you know, I knew there had to be a reason you were doing that, but I never really understood it. And a lot of it has to do with this whole concept of separating your work from your home because it's very, very easy to do. Thanks for that. And you know, one of the other things um, that I want to tell you is your routine should also include boundaries. So for me, I've already told you I have a seven-year-old and seven-year-olds, even when they're at school all day, and right now they aren't, they only get so much time to spend with their working parents. And so one of the things that I say is between 5.30 and 9 p.m., those are times that if you desperately need me, you can ring my phone, but I am not checking text messages. I'm not checking emails because that is my precious time. With this child who's seven now, will probably be 17 next week because that's the way it goes, right? So inside of your routine, make sure that you have boundaries. I want to share with you a few tricks now too. And some of these tricks I think will be really helpful as you start to make this transition into being a person that works from wherever you are. So the first thing is make sure that you have your laptop or your workstation in a place that is defined. So I show this guy with this red line through him, which we all know means no. <laughs> And he's carrying his laptop around. And I will tell you, more than once in my adult career, have I been on a video conference where somebody has left the video on and taken their laptop into the restroom? More than once. And the last thing any of your coworkers want to see is the inside of your restroom or what you do inside of there. So keep your laptop in a place, keep your workstation in a place, and make sure that you are very specific about the times that you're using it. I also want to remind you, power down at the end of the day. Keep thinking about where that distance is, where you can say, this is the end of my workday and the beginning of my personal day. So if you power down your computer, you can say, like, that is it. 
you know, if somebody calls me, if they've got something urgent, I am here for them, but I've powered this down, make it a little bit harder for you to access that computer. The next thing I want to tell you is there's this guy in the middle who is taking a walk. And I will tell you one of the things that's very easy to get sucked into when you first start working from home is not taking breaks. Take your break. There will be inevitably this sort of guilt that sits on top of you where you think people can't see me. They don't know what I'm doing. I have to prove my value. I must respond to every single G chat or Skype message or Slack message as soon as it comes in or else people will think that I'm not working. And I want to tell you, try to take that thought and get rid of it. Get yourself outside, get yourself on your um, stationary bike or your treadmill. Do something to raise your blood pressure. Get your heart pumping. If you were in an office, chances are very good you'd be running from your cubicle to your conference room to the next conference room to somebody's office, back to your cubicle to go get lunch. So you're getting some movement when you're in an office and it is really easy to sit down in your dressy shirt and your sweatpants in your home office and never stand up. It is really easy to do that. So. If you are a person that thrives on routine, schedule that break in, put it on your calendar. Say from 12 to 12.30, I'm getting lunch, I'm taking a walk, I'm running the stairs in my house. I'm gonna do these sorts of things from this time. Again, if you need me, call me. But otherwise, I've gotta do something to keep my heart moving. Your joints will thank you, your blood pressure will thank you, your overall cardiac health will thank you, and give yourself that permission to say, I've got to do what I've got to do. I know David likes to work out in the morning. That's his time of day. Perfect. But make sure that you're not sitting stationary at that desk all day long where the minutes are ticking away. And before you know it, you've got, you've got this inability to remember how to get up and move your muscles. That is really important. Standing desks are also amazing if you have the ability to have a standing desk. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm going to tell you guys what works really great for me. This is a life hack, an Amazon box. So you just get a cardboard box, you set your laptop on top of it, it's perfect standing height for me. The next thing that I wanna show you is to find some time to learn. So your brain needs to be engaged in a way that maybe your employer hasn't thought about yet. You've only really spent one week working from home or you've just been preparing for it. And there are so many amazing free tools out there that will help you with your learning. One I really love is edX, EDX. You can go on EDX and it started off with a bunch of Ivy Leagues like Harvard and Cambridge and MIT that were putting their courses online for free. Amazing courses. For me, because a lot of what I do is work with people in different industries, it was a really good way to say, it's time for me to learn a little bit more about this process. Yes, I've been working in clinical research for a long time, but now I want to learn about the manufacturing process. And so you can go on EDX, which now supports institutions all around the world, and I can take a class in anything. You can take a class in meditation, art. You can take something that's heavier, like how to learn how to code Java. There's so much free learning out there. LinkedIn Learning has got learning that you have to pay for, but you can try it as a free trial. Salesforce has Trailhead Online that tells you everything from how to run a great meeting to how to understand how to integrate different systems together. So give yourself time for learning. I encourage everybody on my team to do this, which is learn more about your profession, learn more about what it is that you're doing, and also learn more about where you wanna go. So look for those online resources to say, how can I learn some things? What are some things I can do? I can tell that you already like learning or else you wouldn't have joined this webinar today. So congratulations for being a person with a growth oriented mindset. And you can apply that same thing to say like, I maybe wanna take a podcast course for eight weeks. I just wanna to listen to it in the morning while I'm taking my walk. You can do those things. So give yourself the time and space to do that. Because if you sit down to work at 8 a.m. and you stand up at 5.30 p.m. and you haven't given yourself some sort of mental break, um, done a crossword puzzle, thought about the way that you can get out and walk, exercise your brain and your body, that is gonna be a challenge. Great, in the foreseeable future. <laughs> and we don't know when it's gonna be over. So many things that we've taken online, offline, in person have now started to change. 
this virtual happy hour I was on last night was uh, a lot of speakers, a lot of people who get out and train large groups of people, um, including myself. And for me, it's unusual to be ground bound. Prior to this week, I've been on travel every single week in 2020. So it's very strange for us to be ground bound. And we really were tossing around ideas on how conferences will change, what will happen after this, how people can do these virtual remote training sessions and try to capture some of the magic that comes face to face. Because it is impossible to plan for happenstance. When you are standing at a conference and there's a really long coffee line, it's so easy to turn to the person behind you and say, man, I wouldn't stand on the line this long, but I really need caffeine. And you can't plan who you're going to meet at those things. And so that's one of the challenges about us moving more things online. And I think it's something that's going to be really interesting for us to see change, challenge, how we can carry on conversations and communications in, and collaboration, especially when we're not doing things face to face. And so you know, using your lifelong learning skills, understanding how to use Zoom, how to use these online collaboration tools is gonna to be really important for everybody who's transitioning. So this is an eye chart, and I want everybody to type in the chat how many logos they can see. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want you guys to do that, but I love this chart. It is the sales technology landscape. And we use it a lot to demonstrate how many different tools there are for online interaction. So you can see on the left-hand side, there are different categories, engagement, productivity and enablement, sales intelligence, pipeline and analytics, people management. And there are, there are charts just like this for every type of technology, HR technology, HRIS, marketing technology, those sorts of things. Everyone's got a chart like this that tells you all of the different technologies that are out there that can help you take work from being in place to being out of place. Sales teams are used to it because they, they, tra they travel a lot and so they have to find ways to feed back to their manager when they're on the road. And so I really wanted to talk specifically about engagement because I think that is one of the things the human soul craves that we're going to be missing. So zooming in on the top corner of this, you can see a lot of logos that I bet you recognize. So there's GoToMeeting, there's WebEx, there's Zoom, there's Hangouts, there's all sorts of different ways that you can engage with people online. If you are a brand new work from home worker, or if you're leading a team, one of the things that I want you to be really thoughtful about as you're buying these types of technologies or you're installing these types of technologies is how difficult is it to install alone remotely? So some of these tools come with software that you have to download. You may be VPN'd in to your local server. You may have administrator passwords on your system. So if you're the person who's responsible for choosing these things, I want you to be thoughtful about when you're trying to find a fill for this unmet need, how challenging will it be for the people who are working from home to try to do this themselves? Because that is a hard part. There will be so much more pressure on IT teams. And if you're somebody that does not have an IT team, there are so many people that love to help around the internet universe that will say, I'm happy to screen share with you, FaceTime with you, jump on the phone with you so I can talk you through how to do these sorts of things. So please feel free to reach out and have people help you. But be thoughtful about the types of things that you're putting out there because it may seem like the perfect solution. But if you are a customer service team, for example, and you're suddenly finding people move from a call center to working from home, consider the age, the technical experience, how, how challenging or easy it's going to be for them to do these types of things. So um, nearly everybody who's on this call today, we could recognize as either being a Microsoft Outlook user or a Gmail user. And those come with a lot of um, communication collaboration tools inside of their suites. Microsoft has Teams, which is beautiful. Um, Google has Google Hangouts and Google Drive, which is beautiful. Those are things that people are used to using. So if you can think about the way that user interacts with that sort of thing, what the user interface is like, and how they're used to it behaving, that will help you whenever you're trying to choose new tools. This week right now, while we're in crisis mode, it's probably 
How do we see each other? How do we have these phone calls? What kind of conference line are we going to use? But you're going to move as this continues to carry on. And as new companies are exposed to how wonderful and how wonderfully productive remote workers are, because they are, they really are. There are tons of studies out there proving that remote workers actually do more than people who sit in an office. They're going to start to think about relaxing the way that they allow people to work as this carries on. So you'll see them move just from the engagement, which is the critical burning issue, into so many, so many more things inside of here, using artificial intelligence, using machine learning, those sorts of things that will really help people in their jobs. So as you're exploring these types of things and you think about the different pieces of technology that are out there, one of the things I really wanna encourage you is do not get super excited and try to find a bunch of things at once. That is for you as the employee, or if you're a leader, or if you're a parent working from home. So if you try to say, okay, kids, we're gonna use the Cozy app, and that's where we're gonna schedule out all of your time that you need to be doing your homework, and people that I work with, here are the three new systems that we're going to employ. Try to do it in small bites. Don't try to overhaul everything at once. It will feel so much better when you get one thing working, you install something new, you get it working. This is actually part of a very popular change management theory that still holds true today. It's from the 60s, but in it, it is encouraged to develop quick wins. So if you can find one thing like Zoom and it works for people and people like it and they understand how to use it, once that gets into common practice, think about the next thing that you want to install and instill. And when you keep it in those small sorts of bites, humans react pretty well to that. So be really thoughtful about being careful about how many things you're going to roll out at once. So speaking of tools, and those of you that know me know that I absolutely love technology. <laughs> I really do. I think there are so many ways that we can use it to make our lives better. I specialize in productivity for sales teams. I'm always thinking about how people can do their jobs better and smarter. And so this week has been interesting for me as a parent um, and as an employer and an employee watching all of these different uh, companies that are responding and saying, hey, we've got something that will be perfect for you. And so we've put these offers out there. I did a decent amount of research and these are the offers that I think are just pretty tremendous. There is support that goes along with all of these. These, and if you wanna take a screenshot, take a picture of this, you can do that. We will share this recording with you when it's done. But if you're on a Mac, you hit shift command four and just take a picture of this right now. These types of offers are amazing. Now, we know that these companies are being thoughtful about their customers. They want people to be able to keep business running as close to as usual as possible. There's so much concern, I think right now personally and in the business community that although we're in such a strange time and it does make your head hurt because things are so heavy, I love watching all these businesses come through and say, we wanna help. I love watching my neighbors say, let's have a sing-along on Sunday. I love all the people who are writing these articles saying, hey, dear parent, you don't have to run an entire homeschool from home while you're also working. So as these companies are coming up with these things, I feel like it's a way that they're personally saying to us, we're giving you permission to get used to what you're doing now. So Salesforce is giving free Quip, which is a really cool collaboration tool. Atlassian, if you've ever used it, they're giving free Jira, free Trello, which is a project management tool. Uh, Box is giving a free business edition. You can see all of these offers that are out there. And I would tell you, you know, play around with them. See how they work. Get inside. If it takes you a lot to figure out how to use it, that probably is not the best thing for you. I always say, I think the best user interface is one where I don't have to explain to somebody too hard how to make it work. So when you pick up a new iPhone, right, you get a new iPhone, you turn it on, you're like, I get it. I understand how so much of this works. If I have to dig through too many pieces of literature telling me how to make something work, it doesn't work that well. So try these things out, see how they're working. I see lots of um, things coming through for those of you that are parents. I know I told you I was gonna talk to you and leaders specifically, and also to people who are wondering about FaceTime. Parents, there are so many tremendous things that are coming around out there. Scholastic has all of their lesson plans online for free. 
there are different tools where people are giving you um, admission to ABC Mouse, those types of things. There are also really cool things floating around the internet where people are doing daily concerts. They're showing you what's happening at zoos. There are loads of ways to find ways to help you help your children. So if you're a parent and you're trying to work from home and you've got a child, the first thing I wanna tell you is give yourself some space. You know, give yourself the ability to say, I'm struggling through this and so is everybody else because nobody is used to trying to run their office full time and also run their child full time too. So give yourself that space. We've got your back. If you're a leader and you're running a team for the first time, one of the first things I will tell you is acknowledge what they're going through and say, hey, it's so weird for us to work from home. I know you guys are wondering if I'm big brothering you and if I want to know what you're doing all day long. But I acknowledge that this is a challenging and trying time for you and set up team meetings. So if you have an 8, 8 a.m. break every day where you come on for five minutes and say, what are you going to work on? What support do you need? How are you doing mentally? What are the cool things that you're watching on Netflix? Have that time where you can sit with your team and say, okay, everybody, it's kind of like we're here. It's like we're working together. And these are the types of things that we would be talking about in the office. You know, we would be talking about the things you're watching on Netflix. So let's do it here too. It doesn't have to be work, 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 or else we're all going to turn into the shining. And if you're a person who's saying, how, how am I going to make myself valuable? Because I know I want to be promoted. I know I want people to understand my value. Start thinking about that value first. So reach out to your boss or your leader and say, hey, what are the things that you can't figure out that I could spend some time researching? What are the challenges you're having that I can help unload for you? What are the things that are really different now that we're not inside of an office all of the time? And they'll tell you exactly what it is and work with them to come up with that sort of prescription because everyone's on equal footing. We're all now just learning how to work from the, from the home, from the confines of our own home. And so if you say, I wanna display my value, I wanna show you my value, I wanna ask you what would be valuable, you will stand out as that person. So we got a question about whether we will make these slides available, and we will. I wanna thank our sponsor who is Confirmed Instant Scheduler. So. I know personally when I first saw Confirmed, I was blown away by how powerful I thought this could be after my, you know, I don't even want to tell you guys, but I think it's been about two decades that I've been leading sales teams, particularly inside sales teams. I thought, yes, this is it. This is, this is one of the things that's going to help save me. And now that I'm taking so many more calls via Zoom and not from the road, it's become really invaluable. So David, I'd like to invite you to um, accept my thanks <laughs> for sponsoring this webinar today and tell us just a little bit about Confirmed and the really cool thing you're working on. Thanks. So first of all, let me state that we are not going to do a demo. We are not going to spend a lot of time on Confirmed in this session. We are sincerely interested in flattening the curve and that's why we're doing this. For those of you who are interested based on what we're talking about today in seeing a demonstration or, or uh, learning a little bit more beyond what we're talking about today, we'd be happy to uh, set something up. Just basically though, with Confirmed, what we do is we help you strategically manage your schedule so that it could be more effective on an ongoing basis throughout the course of the week so that you can get higher meeting acceptance rates while you are in, uh, if you are in a business development or role that you need to be able to get more people to accept your, your meetings. And it helps you basically manage your time and be able to get a better set of insights into what you're doing. We like to say that we, combine best practices with insights, analytics, and automation. But we'll tell you about that some other time if you're interested in that. Today, uh, I think, uh, if you're, are you turning this over to me then, Shannon, at this point? Well, thank you, I pre appreciate that. So we've been hearing about a whole bunch of things over the past couple of weeks as people have been challenged to start changing the methodology that they're working, whether it was because they are typically on the road from city to city to city and their companies call them back to take them off the road, or whether it's because they're being pushed out the door of their companies. We kept hearing some very, very consistent messages about, I'm not ready for this, or I think I'm gonna have this type of challenge, or, uh, or these are the things that bother me or concern me with this new reality. Um, so we started to look at that and say, what is it that we can do with 
the issues that people are facing and how is that applicable to even those who are seasoned in working from home or working remotely or being on the road and what is it that we can do for them in this trying time so we came up with this idea of helping you equip your office better now before we show that shannon just let me point out here that on this webinar, we get a lot of people and I see based on what you filled out when we asked you the questions when you registered that you go up or across a range of, of different types of industries. We've got people in here from financial, we've got people in the education industry, higher ed and uh, K through 12. I see technical schools in there. We have media people, we've got people in the consulting industry, training, software. Those are the ones that stuck out to me as we went on. And there are others too that, that I apologize for not naming them all. I also see that there are various roles, people who are working at home for the first time, those who are sending your teams out and need to be able to have an infrastructure or way for them to be able to function properly as a team. And then some of you are seasoned as well. And while most of you seem to be technically competent, or at least that's what you say when you filled out the form, um, we suspect that there are times that you're gonna need some, some additional things. So as we put together our programs, we said, what can we do? What should we do? What are we the best people to help do? And what are the things that we can try to do but won't be so good? And we ended up coming up with a program that we hope you'll like and we hope you'll take advantage of. So Shannon, why don't we go to that next slide then? So it's called the Flatten Your Curve Work at Home program. And uh, we put it together, it's on behalf of Confirmed. And the idea here is we wanna help you set up your office. We are finding an overriding message of, I am not equipped to do this, I don't have this type of technology, I wish I had this. I mean, look at where I'm, I'm uh, broadcasting from. It's my, it's my home. It's my home office. And you see all this stuff behind me. Now, some of you might have the tips to be able to say, okay, let's, let's set up in a different place. And I know I've had people who said to me in the past, because I do work from home a lot, what's all that stuff behind you? Shannon's got a different thing. So maybe you might want to put a green screen in. And we have something that could help you buy that green screen. I'm not going to buy the green screen for you, but something that can help you buy that green screen or some of the other things. There are little things that, you know, uh, um, talking about what Shannon uh, was, was talking about earlier, she talked about making sure that you don't carry your camera around with your computer, right? So it doesn't catch you in certain places. Well, how about spending three to five dollars on a lens cover for your camera? Or at worst, take a piece of masking tape and put it over. Mark Zuckerberg does it. If he's concerned with privacy, and we all know that he's on the other end of the spectrum with privacy, then you should be as well. So maybe that's one thing you should consider buying for yourself. In order to help out with the timing, you might want to consider that, because uh, uh, Shannon mentioned before that it's easy to just keep working and not take breaks. Maybe you ought to consider a concept called a Pomodoro timer, which is 25 on, 5 out. F try 25 minutes working, five minutes off. There are lots of timers out there. Some of them are free, some of them cost a couple dollars. And uh, you can also time your work so you can see where you're, where you're appropriate. People who've worked with me before have gotten really, they thought I was really incensed when I took my toggle timer out, which is a particular brand that I was using for my own timing to be able to understand where my productivity is. But remember these things, the green screens, the uh, change of your camera, those things help. But we're gonna talk right now on the bigger standpoint that we wanna help you in a bigger way. So we can help you by buying you things. We made the decision that if you're a customer of Confirmed, we're gonna help you set up your office. So the types of things that we've set up to buy for you are things that most uh, home offices require at a very, very foundational level and that you probably need you may or may not have them all, and we thought we would help you by giving you a choice on what we could supplement you if you're a client of ours. So, you see in this particular um, image that, that Shannon's got up there right now, we see, you can see that we're willing to buy you something to help you with your audio. And we'll give you a choice of a Plantronics headset or earbuds if you like Apple. Choose one of the two, or if you prefer, you might want an all-in-one copy machine, scanner, 
it does do printing. This particular one that we chose is from HP and it has a uh, wireless printing capability and it's got a 35 uh, document feeder. It's really a strong home office type of, of uh, piece of equipment. So on one scenario, you might, we might be able to buy you this. If we can go to the next, thank you. In other scenarios, you may say, all I need is a better way to be able to do my meetings. So we've hand chosen a handful of items that we can buy you, which include those that, that Shannon mentioned before. I noticed that you said Teams is now part of a different package. So maybe that might not be as important to you uh, as, as some of these others are. But, you know, and we'll have specific, we'll, we'll outline this for you in fact, this afternoon, we're going to be posting it. On the, in the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see our LinkedIn page. We're going to be posting it there. And then the left-hand side down at the bottom is our URL. You're going to need to move that. Thank you, Shannon. Um, but this is where you're going to be able to find the details about what will make you eligible for what. But we'll buy these things for you so that you can either upgrade or supplement. One of the things we like to do with Confirmed is we believe that when we deal with people on the other end, sometimes you're more comfortable with one technology versus another. For instance, um, I might offer them a WebEx meeting and they may never have used WebEx before. They may be more comfortable with Skype. This one, Zoom, you probably have all used Zoom before. And I know over the last week or so, I have encountered at least a dozen people in my own dealings who have never dealt with Zoom before. And they're asking for things like free conference call or go to meeting or WebEx or one of those. Um, and we try to accommodate them. So when, we, when you deal with Confer, we, give you, we let you give them choices, but you might want to have a second one or you might want to get the one that you've got paid for you um, or reimbursed. Um, what do we got on the next page here, Shannon? Ah, yes, coffee. There are so many of us who are coffee drinkers who can't wait to get to the office to get that first cup or that second cup or that third cup or that fifth cup of coffee and you're shaking and bouncing off the walls like I am right now. But the fact is when we're at home, sometimes we go, oh, look, coffee's expensive. So we're... One of the things that we're um, that we've put in the in the choices is a cert gift certificate for you, where you can buy online because you can't walk into stores in many states these days. But where you can buy on a gift package of coffee, or there might be something else that you want to treat yourself to that you usually get at the office, or maybe these little things that I mentioned before combine the lens cover and 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 Pomodoro timers or some other types of devices that you think will be helpful to you in, in order to help you get that kickstart. So put it all together. We're going to help you set up your office um, as confirmed users. And we'll get that up at our LinkedIn company page this afternoon so you can see what it's all about. Now, just to give you some sense of that, though, you will need to be a, the, the program we're going to offer through the end of April. And it's going to start today. Uh, and all the terms and conditions will be up there so that you can take advantage of it. So we hope that'll be helpful for you, and we hope you'll be able to take advantage of that. And we'll continue to give you resources. Most of the resources that we see are replicative, so we're going to try not to replicate or duplicate all the things that are going out there. We know that the CDC has got, and the National Institutes of Health have got a lot of great information, so we're not going to we're not going to put that kind of thing up there. But like what Shannon was just showing you, where, we're, where we found out about some of the deals that are out in the market to help you with things that can help you here. We'll find some other resources for you. I mentioned to you a Dale Carnegie 90 minute free webinar that we know of. If there are other learning organizations that are providing free webinars that you think we should also share, please let us know about that. We deal with a whole bunch of people around the country uh, and, and can help you there. Um, Shannon, what else am I missing here? Is, is there anything that, 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 um, that I just dropped off the, off the face? Because I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm doing a little soft shoe here. I have this, none of this is rehearsed. That's great. This is perfect. We did have a comment from Andrew in the chat box, and he said if somebody's looking for a standing desk, they can do it at their kitchen. And he also said great. he loves being with his house behind him because it's a good icebreaker. It's a good conversation starter. So people will look at it and say, did you just remodel your kitchen? So those are the types of 
humane things that we want to bring into you working from home. Don't, don't feel like you need to shut off the fact that you're a human. We don't have work-life balance anymore. We have work-life harmony. And now that you are transitioning from being a person who works in place to somebody who works from home, the things are going to change and that's okay because everybody is. So don't feel like you have to hide it or pretend like it doesn't exist. It's cool to say, yeah, I'm here. I'm here in my kitchen. I'm here in my living room. You know, that's something that I bought on my honeymoon. That was pretty cool. You know, did you go on a honeymoon? And it's a really good way to have those conversations that would ordinarily occur, you know, inside of the office, just without you thinking twice about it. Right. Agreed with that. And, and thank you for that. We see that there are people in here. We, we've got um, some people here with some very strong credentials from uh, behavioral economics and from psych, uh, and psychology. And we're seeing several of those. So I'm really excited to have them with us. And we'll if they've got things that they want to share as well, we'll try to repeat that. We'll put some posts up there, et cetera. Now we're coming on the top of the hour. So we don't want to be able to roll, roll over the top of the hour. So we will end here. You have or you will have at least a way to be able to get to us by email. You feel free to get to us. We will also let you know about this webinar we talked about. We will let you know about this program and when it's up on uh, our LinkedIn company page as well. We thank you for being here. We hope we have the opportunity for working with you in the future. And just remember, especially now, because you've got, you've got this really critical decision every day facing you about whether I should go out to the grocery store or to the, to the beer distributor or to wherever it is you're going uh, to meet your family or what have you. The best way to predict the future, as they're trying to do right now, is to invent the future. So we'll ask you to help us invent it by flattening the curve. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. And thanks to everybody for joining us. Our thoughts are with you. Happy Friday.